you shall retire from it. That's when you're moving. I don't it. think I'm ever going to retire from from wanting to help kids and people. And the part of finding uh, someone like me to help in another area and then have another kid, I, you know, is probably going to be uh, something I'm going to work on for a while. And so I'm, I'm looking yeah, forward. yeah, maybe a, maybe a book is next. Well, we've been talking about that's been in the mix for a, a while. Is this, that, I, this thing came to me from prayer, I think, and confidence that something was going to keep on, you know, going down the road and, and going to happen if I just kept up. I can only do so many things at one time. It, it, the, you know, to, or else I get crowded and too much. I don't like getting too crowded, especially when I'm supposed to be retired. One of the greatest things about Bruce is the pace at which he naturally lives life. Uh, if you were to compare it probably to the pace of society and its demands, it's probably at least half that speed, uh, if not more. And I think that serves many benefits. And we'll get into that because I feel like a lot of that's connected to your relationship with nature and the autism. Well, see, I'm going to... Actually, let's let Michael do his thing before we dive in. Because I know This is the way I get. So you'll have to bear with me. Cut me off or tell me what to do. And then I'll, I'll go along with it. Michael, got... are, where's Michael, you want me to mute everybody already? Or, yeah, I think we're ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to mute all and you'll have to unmute yourself and then we are going to start. I'm so excited. All right. Hello. Now you're muted. Uh, oh, you muted me too. Yeah. Um, so hello, everyone. Welcome to our second um, Nature Matters Zoom, uh, weekly Zooms. And this is um, a special conversation that we're having today. Um, and I'll introduce our, our guests in just a little bit. But um, this kind of connects with kind of the end of last week and kind of talking about the benefits of nature. And from a very um, unique and firsthand experience, which is really important um, to get into the conversation, right? Um, and so a couple of things before we begin just for how this is going to work is that um, our special guest, Bruce Zimple, um, there is on the left, by the way. And then on the right is Matthew, his uh, today tech, tech extraordinaire assistant and Oprah stand-in. So Matthew is going to ask Bruce the questions that Hillary and I have prepared and that all of you were shared with all of you um, to kind of just make sure we minimize the back and forth the Zoom call chaos that can kind of happen. So Matthew is going to uh, ask Bruce the questions. So if you don't hear Hillary and I talking, that's why. Um, everyone else will be muted and we'll make sure they're on speaker view so they're nice and big so everyone can focus on that conversation that happens. After that, we'll have like a little bit of a pause and we want you to, we'll have questions from all of you. And the way that that's going to work is you're going to put them in the chat. We're going to arrange them. So whatever order you come in and we're going to have you unmute yourself and ask it out loud. Okay. So we just want you to put in the chat to make sure that questions are being duplicated. Number one, and then number two, that we have a specific order um, to go in. Okay. Does that make sense? Everyone good? Thumbs up if it makes sense. All right. Great. So um, I will turn it over then to Bruce and Matthew um, to talk and uh, hope everyone enjoys. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Hillary, for having us. Uh, as you know, uh, most of you who popped in got a great opportunity to experience the person that Bruce Simple is firsthand. Um, and he has a lot more to share with you all today. And since the topic is why nature matters. Uh, we're going to start with the question for you, Bruce. How did your love of the outdoors start? Well, I remember the, the, the youngest I can go back is when I was uh, 
living at Deerwood at an old schoolhouse. And we had a baseball diamond and the kids would come and play and stuff like that. And then I got used to going down to the Portage Lake and the Sloan's, uh, Pat and Myrtle Sloan owned a boat rental business. And my brother uh, went down and we were, started catching frogs in, in just a little corner of the boat and rental thing, place. And then down at the end of the lake was this great big cow pasture. With the, uh, I call them black and white moo cows. Does anybody know what the moo cows are called? Milk cows? Okay, nobody knows. Uh, you can't hear me or what? You'd think the ag school guy would know, but. But anyway, oh, that's, Anyway, I oh, call scenes? them milk cows. Black okay. and white milk We're cows. gonna go with milk cows. Okay. Well, they had the, the grass and, and the manure piles and stuff. And I just found that intriguing. And then I started selling to the bass fishermen. And not the cow patties. Not the cow patties, frogs. But anyways, went to uh, the sports shops in Deerwood in Bay Lake and, was, and started selling them for a dollar a dozen. And I knew that I could make money and I bought bicycle and then I started golfing. And the, the, the different thing about the golf course is I was in the nature, but I seen the effect at an early age what golf courses did have on the environment and the spaces, you know, that I was hanging out with. And then later on in life, it's been with me all the way to like this day that what I learned when I was a young man, the young boy. So I could go on forever. Well, there was a big turning point for you. And I think um, this gets into our second question of how did you come to realize that being outside was for you? And your family moved to the North Shore when you were 13, 14 to Lucen. Can you describe that as a very uh, big turning point? Does it go back further than that? Well, when I was younger and, and did the, like, sucker spirit for a little kid, and having a uh, run of suckers coming after you, you know, and those and, are a fish. And those are fish, you know, and then and have a spirit and then just the uh, being together in the wilderness, you know, woods and stuff like that that you started seeing what they uh, brought into the environment and things like that as a young kid. Yeah, and you started making observations on the North Shore. Uh, uh, boy, when I got up here, did I went fishing down at the Poplar River is one of my favorite places. And I actually just got some video of the first runoff of the river and uh, made a little, uh, nice little short video about that. And, and then going up on the mountain, there's a mountain that's related to the Lutzen Mountains, the ski hill. And, and going up there in the fall time and this eagle come flying by me and, and it had the big vista over the Poplar River and things like that. And then I got to go down and started fishing for these big brook, he said they're like 18, uh, you know, two to three pound brook trout back there. And that, uh, I was like the only one running around back there a lot of the times. And still to this day, it's probably one of the rare guys that go back in the bush on the upper poplar river. And when we were talking about this earlier, one of the things that you said to me that made the natural world special to you is that you could go and have, there were creatures and beings, whether trees or animals that you could talk to and they would listen and they wouldn't talk back. Can you tell us a little bit about that process as a young person? I love pine learning. And they'll come right up to you while you're in the woods and sit there and look at you and stuff. And different animals like that, I would get to know a certain buck, you know, 
and how it, it, it grew up and got really big. And then I got to the point I wouldn't even want to hunt. But I just wanted to know that he was alive. And I'd see him on the night, I'd let him go run around, you know, run away from me in the woods when I could have harvested. But things like that, now I enjoy seeing them more than I do of hunting as much as I used to. And that's one of the things that I've gotten with Mother Nature. Uh, I really, really have a close bond with Mother Nature and when there's like different things happen. When I want it to rain or something, now I don't know if it, if it has to do with, with really me or just circumstances or, or you know, it's going to rain in the springtime, you know, it's no doubt. But when I think about something long enough, and I want to go down to the river like the next day. I'll go down there and it would just be beautiful. Nobody else will be there. And, and that's what I, you know, I'm really good at that. So, like I know all the rivers right now and which one to go and where to go fishing and what to use. And, you know, it's a, it's a real blessing. But I work at it too, you know. And one of the ways that you've described learning, one of the most important ways that you have learned to be a fisherman angler, of which uh, Bruce's primary reputation in our region is as a, a trout angler. And as a boy, you started watching other people fish. Well, when I got back, from the military is when I got into the salmon fishing. But before that, when I was earlier, younger, I was just starting to go to the Devil's Track River and watching the steelhead fishermen standing on the ice. And like there would be one guy there and it was like Howard Hoogum. And he worked for the DNR and he would be, I'd go down there and ask him if he's catching anything and he'd say no, you know, that he'd have nice trout sitting right on the ice, like five feet away, you know, covered <laughs> up in snow. Things like that. Uh, I, I got tons of stories and stuff like that. Well, there was an important milestone that happened in your life just a couple of years ago. And you found out that your whole life you've had autism. You are on the autism spectrum, just uh, the autism spectrum. And now, as you look back, you've seen how that has shaped who you are, and especially re your relationship with nature. Do you want to say anything about what it's like learning about autism and how that has impacted your view of who you are and nature? Well, I kind of feel like I'm a part of it. But, uh, with God, and I have a really funny way of looking at it. I got, uh, God's kind of separated with, between outdoor gods, fishing gods, and hunting gods, and mother nature. And I talk to, you know, all of them is separately, and I don't think there's a whole lot of people do that. But I am very well connected. Like talk to them like my best buddy. Like right now, I'm looking out the window, and I, you know, how is everybody doing? You know, I'm like thinking, well, yeah, well, maybe the rain gods up here today. The know. rain gods yeah. are, you know, uh, where they go. You know, they're still there. Okay. All right. Next question. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this, you mentioned when people were coming on, uh, we've talked a little bit about Jeffrey and uh, getting him more, he has an autism diagnosis as well. And you've been learning how to introduce him to the woods and help him get comfortable. This is a kid that has spent most of his time in the bed in front of the screen um, and on, on his devices. What was it like introducing Jeffrey to the woods and how to move in the woods? Well, 
it took a while for him to relax and stuff like that and get more comfortable with me. And then from what I told him, I would sit and tell him a lot of stuff about what was going to happen before he ever did anything. And I, he, he was like, I remember one of the videos that I told him, uh, walk around in the woods, look for deer sign and, and that. And there's a log, a tree falling down over there. So we work our way over to it and then put the, your rifle up and then look and, and just hang out there for a little while. He did pretty much exactly what I asked him to do. And uh, it went really well. I, I, I got some pretty good view. I just got the camera and I have a tablet and my phone, but the video camera is, I, I've gotten some really good stuff with that. So. so there's some key things you mentioned there, Bruce. And I think this applies especially to kids on the spectrum. You spent a lot of time telling him what he could expect so that there weren't surprises. And then you gave him really specific instructions on how to be in the woods. And then you just let him go do it. And some, like, we went out a couple, three times, and he was getting used to the repetition. We like, I like repetition, and I think Jeffrey does too. So if he knows where he's going out to go somewhere, took him out to the same place like three different times, and he, we kind of did different things in the same spot, but he learned different things, and you have to be patient with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one thing that I, you didn't mention, but I remember this in hindsight is you found Jeffrey's buy-in, the thing that he was excited to do, which was shoot his father's gun. And he had never shot his father's gun before. And you made sure to make that happen for him, uh, which was a huge milestone. And I think from then on out, he, he was interested in what you were sh sharing with him. So. I know you've talked about being patient with Jeffrey, but that's been one of your key skills. You want to talk about that at all, especially in the in, in nature? Well, I when I get out in nature, I kind of become a different fella. So because I'm relaxed and I, I love where I'm at. And to teach Jeffrey uh, things is just like I had him out on the ice cutting a hole with his chainsaw, you know? I mean, who, who is, who's going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I was there and, and he cut a really nice hole and then we put the, my wiggly wings bait down that I designed and I'm teaching him how to do that. Nobody's going to teach him these things really. Not in school, probably. Not, no chainsaws. Not, no chainsaws. Maybe at their school, they have a pretty cool school. <laughs> yeah, maybe if I think I want to do that. But anyways, the mom went around, Lon knew what was going on. I explained it to her before that. And, and, and to get in line with the parents is you gotta, the best thing to do is ask them first kind with the, and then, and then she, she asked Jeffrey and then Jeffrey will say yes. That's one of the things that I've learned about the, the thing is uh, getting mother more involved because she don't know a lot about what's going on and you sit down and talk to her about it and then you'll get a good vibe of whether Jeffrey's going to want to do it or not. You know, things like that. You know, I think that connects to your past too, Bruce, about how, you know, your mom never had a chance to understand what autism was. And so that caused a lot of misunderstandings. Well, no, it did, you know. I'm still having my family know that I'm on the, doing this. They they don't really know what to think. <laughs> how I'm, you know, how are you? How, you know, it's just interesting that I'm doing. That I've come so far with this and that, and they're uh, excited that that there's more. Uh, ahead before, you know, the next year and a half should be pretty interesting if my health holds up and everything. So I can get out and do stuff like this. 
I only live like 20 miles away from here to come in here. I call it the interrogation room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got some smiles. There we go. <laughs> anyway, okay. What? So you're, this is, this is, I think, a good segue, Bruce. So you're talking to a bunch of educators. And uh, I'm wondering if when you reflect back on your own educators, the teachers in your life that had an impact on you, um, what made them the best teachers for you? Well, uh, Bear Carlson was a science teacher and he uh, was a steelhead fisherman. And he was in with all the older guys like Howard Hoogman. And uh, there was like a half a dozen of the guys that would go up to Canada and some would go down to Michigan. And just the connection of that, he liked to talk stupid fishing. And he was really good about it. And that's something that I was interested in. That's why I started going down the Devil's Track River because a lot of guys went to the Devil's Track River. And I would learn uh, how to fish steelhead there and stuff like that. But uh, Bear Carlson became the mayor of Grand Marais later on in life. We're sitting and, you know, visiting out on the town and stuff like that. But he uh, would bring up these stories and uh, about steelhead fishing and stuff. And we were just, it, it's just like uh, being in fantasy land, you know? I, I learned a lot of things about the area, other parts of the Olympic Peninsula in Washington. Nobody was talking about the, the world's largest steelhead and, and places to go and stuff like that. And I've been there now because of what he told me when I was a young boy. I've, I've gone out to Idaho and the Olympic Peninsula and places like that. So it, it started when I was pretty young. So you had this educator in your life who told you about the worlds that you hadn't encountered yet, about Steelhead, about the local rivers, about the bigger world, and you're still visiting those places because of the impact that this teacher had on your life. Yeah. And it sounds like he really met you on your level. Yeah, yeah, I did. I think that's pretty powerful. And I think I would imagine a lot, do we have any science teachers? No, 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 oh, I see. Michelle and Hillary are science teachers, and I bet they can relate to that. I used to teach sixth grade. Um, I'm almost tearing up about the impact that teacher had on you. Mm -hmm. You want to say anything else about that, Michelle? Well, I just... <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I think that's one of the people. most wonderful things that a teacher can do. And... You are what, almost 65 now? I am 62. 60, <laughs> 63. And you remember that. And to me, that is um, one of the most powerful things teachers do for kids. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I gotta, I gotta go. I mean, <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna just mute. <laughs> thank you, Michelle. Okay, well, it touches my heart to, to, to have you so touched too. So. Um, okay, um, we're gonna come to that question in just a minute. I'm gonna ask you one more, one more question from our list. Um, now you have all these teachers here. You're just talking about an influential teacher. Do you have any, um, anything you'd like to tell them about working with students with autism, students on the autism spectrum, any secrets that they could learn from you being on the inside? I think one of the biggest things is that you know, like, like, like people that don't know, then you're, you're, you're dealing with an individual that you may have ideas, but you don't know that they have a, a, on the autistic spectrum. And that, that, and so the, the teaching that's going on now and an awareness of it, that you, you know, you know, and when you know that there's something wrong, then you have a lot better chance of addressing it. 
and then ask them and talk to them and, and, and don't, don't talk as they get to know you better and stuff. It might take them a little while, but that, that's probably one of the best things that I can tell you about that. Yeah, and you spent your whole life with people not knowing. And so now you know what it's like. I still, the, my family, I still got a roadblock with my family, you know, that I'm doing this. And uh, my, my family pretty smart uh, individuals and uh, it's kind of cool to just be, you know, they're, they're just, uh, I'm, I'm blessed. And I hope it, it continues because I, I want to help as many people as I can, you know, teachers. I hope I get like a hundred thousand billion teachers before I finish, <laughs> you know, they just joke about the numbers. Maybe that's perfect. I wonder if we can learn, uh, See, what does a hundred billion million look like? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that after the call. How about that? Just, just, okay. We got a question in the chat box. Can I read it to you? Yeah. So uh, Michelle has asked uh, how we how the two of us met. Do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, I was working with another fella, which uh, was doing the same similar position that Matthew's doing now. And he just more or less, the, the individual went and got another position. And so Matthew started working with me. And then he, he was interested in the BWCA and doing the pod thing. And uh, we just gelled right away. And it, and I know a lot, a lot of places to go fishing and when to go and where to go and everything. And I can tell he's interested about that. And I, you know, I, I, I try and tell him some things, but it, there's, I told people and then it ended up like they're sitting in my spot, you know, the next day or something like that. So I haven't that, stolen a single fishing spot yet. <laughs> that's happened to, you know, other people. But, and really, I'd say one of the things that we've been able to trade with each other is, um, you know a lot about the outdoors, and I know quite a bit about the autism spectrum. So I've shared a lot of that with you, which you've appreciated, and you shared a lot of your world and the natural world with me, which I really appreciated. So it's been a, is that a fair exchange? Yeah, it's been fair. Well, none of this would fear and I didn't pursue uh, a long time ago, so, you know, that part of that. Uh, just had a lot of faith that I was put on the earth for something and now it's becoming this and it's, uh, this is pretty cool. So hopefully it'll last for a while yet. So we're gonna open it up uh, in case anybody has any questions. Um, we have a few sort of backup questions that we can cover, but I um, wanted to thank you, Michelle, for chiming in with that um, personal experience. And if anybody else has thoughts that they, even uh, observations for any of you that work with kids on the spectrum that you're interested in sharing or any part of Bruce's story that resonated, we'd love to hear it. I would oh, like, go ahead. I would like to know that who knows, is there other, uh, autistic children out there that like the outdoors that we could see if we can find somebody that help them like me or we don't know yet. Definitely. I just, my name is Ananda. I actually work with Hillary over at the School of Environmental Science. I apologize. My birds are being kind of loud right now. <laughs> I, I wanted to sit downstairs and I'm like, oh, that's right. I have the birds. Anyway, I actually I'm a special education teacher. And my license is in autism. And so I've worked with a wide range of um, students on the autism spectrum. And it's interesting that you say the outdoors because, sorry about that. It's interesting, I, here I can move. My birds are really, really loud. Um, it's interesting that you are asking about uh, students who 
are interested in the outdoors because I actually have done a lot of studies on, I'm, I'm a classical piano player and I've actually done a lot of studies on and have taught piano to students um, who have autism. So a lot of students that I have met uh, tend, you know, tend to have either a musical background or uh, maybe a tech background. They like computer sciences, but I don't know if it's maybe a social anxiety that they might have with being able to be comfortable outdoors. I haven't met a lot of students who are comfortable on going outside, exploring. Some of them will go outside and take walks and, you know, do quick stuff, but yeah. Yeah, it's that's kind of puzzles me. And it could be because we live down here in the suburbs and <laughs> not everyone's stuck to their games and you know being inside and COVID and but it's yeah, it's really interesting. It's it's interesting to uh, hear you want to um see, you know, just kind of inquire if if uh, students um or younger, I guess younger adults that I work with, <clears throat> if if they are curious about you know going outside and I think it'd be great I really want to try to uh, introduce that to more of my students that I work with and introduce that you know there's so many things you can do outside um, it's probably not the same as gaming it's more real re reality <laughs> so but you know it's I think it's um, having different students you know kind of step out of their comfort zone you know, yeah. and what, what advice would you give those students the that advice. might have a hard time? I think you have to talk to them and, and slowly get them interested in something that has to do with the outdoors. It could be a butterfly, liking butterflies or liking uh, frogs or liking something that in the science part of it and then take them out there and get them interested. Or, gu could, or guns, like Jeffrey. <laughs> well, yeah. Some of them, yeah, but, yeah. But, but anything that he's interested, he got the biggest kick, Jeffrey did, because he shot his dad's rifle and his dad hadn't shot it yet. He shot it twice, and I was I shot my dad's rifle twice before he yeah. got to shoot it, and so things like that. You know, you may not think that that's all that big a deal, but uh, it means something to them. Mm -hmm. To have that ad, kind of that self ad, admiration or that self achievement. Oh, he, yeah, he, he was yeah. proud of himself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really cool, really cool. Thank you so much, Bruce. This is so amazing to to speak to someone. I told Hillary, I was so excited to hear you today, just to see, you know, see your um, personality and your different perspective on things. And it's, it's very, very cool. Well, I have a different personality. That's yeah, just, yeah, just they're letting, me, they're letting me do this. And I'm yes. just, so the, God bless everyone. You know? Oh, it's great. It's great. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah. You know what I was thinking, and I don't know if this is necessarily true, it's just a thought. I grew up in Alaska, Moose Creek, Alaska, which I've only met three people who know where that is. My brother and I were outside all the time. That's what we did 24-7. Um, and so we were raised like that until we were, what, 17? And so I, I, I wonder sometimes if just people maybe in the suburb, maybe just don't have experience and maybe it's not a thought that we have to take our kids. And I think Bruce, you brought up a really good point about telling kids what to expect, whether they're autistic or not. I think they need to know well, what it's like when you go into a restaurant with your kids and you go, okay, this is how you're going to act. Same thing with nature. And then the anxiety lowers and I think they get more comfortable. And, and that's just my, my thinking. Um, Hillary, you probably know more than I do, you and Michael, but 
that's just my thinking that you have to prep kids to know what to expect. Well, I know talking to therapy, it helps a lot because he does listen. He's a very low key fella. And when he talks to me, sometimes he don't face me and I and I have trouble understanding what he says and that it just kind of go along, you know, and make sure that I'm not getting myself in a situation. <laughs> but I gotta talk, I, I gotta tell him, you know, Kevin, you gotta speak up and, and look toward me and stuff like that. So you gotta communicate with him or else he'll just go off on his own. So I'm noticing Terry, I think, Terry, did you have your hand up? Yeah. So I work with kids with significant um, multiple disabilities. Um, and so I have noticed that um, getting out in nature helps calm them. So I just, Bruce was wondering, um, when you're out in nature, could you like talk about how you feel out there? It makes me uh, feel like I'm safe. I'm a good navigator. I love going to places I don't know. I'll look it up on the map. I'll take my compass with me. When the sun goes down or get cloudy, you can get lost. Very easy. Start going around in circles. You know, you don't have to go very far around here to get off into the woods. And so I, I'll tell you a story about going up to Ely Community College and we did the map and compass thing. I was the closest guy. I came like, we went like two miles this way, that way. And because of my learning skills with bow, I know how, what third, you know, like one yard was. So I would go to a clump of stuff and not even try and go through it. I would just estimate to an object on another side and go around it and take off down the trail, you know, the woods. I don't think a lot of people did that. So I think it's interesting, Bruce, that you're talking about going into a dangerous place, dangerous in the terms that you could get lost, but you're describing being very safe. Yeah, it's pretty cool to be able to do that. And one of the things that you told me is that, and I'm wondering if this connects to feeling safe, is that, that nature doesn't talk back. Is that part of, you know, you can express yourself and no one tells you how to be? But when Mother Nature wants me to know something that it's listening to me, it'll storm or something or lightning or the sun will come out or some weird thing will happen. And then I just think that it's responding to me. Yeah. Don't talk to me, but it responds to me. I'm not hearing things. And Bruce, when you were a kid, you weren't tromping out with a compass into no. the middle of nowhere. I you was just started kidding. right by the road, going right into following the rivers where you couldn't get lost, and you worked your way up to that. Yeah. So it sounds like starting small. Oh, one of the reasons that I'm where I'm at right now is because I slowly took my time and never got too frustrated. Something didn't work. I find something else that I was interested in could have. And I do something like, I'll do this probably for a while. And then it's probably gonna lean towards more of isolation and, and uh, doing the things that I want to do with the rest of my life and that. And then, why well, I try and make this movie thing and then go down to the University of Minnesota and do a promotional thing with a whole bunch of teachers or whoever in the auditorium. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I can do that, with, but I need help. I need your help, I need Matthew's help, and then buddy help me, I could do a lot of stuff. You know? So we'll see how that all goes. But I've got this far though, Hillary. Sounds like you have a vision for kind of sharing um, both about your autism, um, outdoors. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit more about what in the end you want to give to people because I'm very inspired by how much you do give to people and I think that that's very admirable. So what do you, if, 
if in 10 years you could have given what you want to, what would that, what would, what would that look like? I would have, like to have, I don't know how many fellas or, cup, or couples or whatever, you know, guy like me and Jeffrey, but I would like to see it grow and, and be like maybe a government program or something, I don't know. You're talking about older folks. Older folks finding the younger one or the younger one find, or the, 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 uh, the teachers or the uh, people in the, you know, like you in that finding, uh, you know, people that work together. That, uh, I can see doing the Zoom and, uh, you know, the internet thing, believe it or not, I'm actually, I think, becoming fairly comfortable with it because the, the time and thing is you got to be at a certain place at a certain time. But I know I'm, there's no real surprises here. You know, I, I, I am enjoying it very much. So, I, you know, it's not something I'm, I'm going to be really good at this in about a year. <laughs> it is. There's an intimacy on Zoom that is kind of strangely nice, even though we're not together. Um, I, I know. So what I hear you talking about is more mentorships where people with autism can really share their way of being, which is maybe I'm hearing a little slower, somebody who notices things. Um, yet you seem to really have a sense of the big picture in a very important way that feels missing a lot. I mean, I'm getting that just from listening to you, and um, it's nice well, to hear. I want to go and get Jeffrey because he has Mondays off <laughs> and pull him in here, but I I didn't do it. But you know, if I do more of these things, I'm going to get Jeffrey in here sooner or later or work with me because he's getting more comfortable with me. And then when I asked him to help me with the video thing, and he really didn't know what he was getting himself into. And then Matthew wanted to help. And then we could see the, his skills and, and what he's been doing in that. But uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to, to, to working with Jeffrey to open him up. I would want to get him a computer class. Like, I don't know, uh, to do to work with us possibly in the future and then you know get him uh some education and then maybe uh, with a small business uh thing or something like that to uh work on that there's a, there's a lot to it you know i will throw out there that one of the uh, two sides of the coin of living in a rural area like we do is that there are there aren't many resources when it comes to um, people with um, non-mainstream needs. And so that is a hard thing, but one of the beautiful things that can come out of it is a more natural um, mentorship type relationship. And uh, I think harnessing the power of that uh, experience that Bruce is having and bringing that into spaces that have resources is a huge part of what his vision is. So anything else? I think you should go to, um, I'm actually going to Lutzen Resort in a couple weeks. I think you oh, should boy. go to Lutzen Resort and talk to them and try to do a class through them. I think that'd be, I think that'd be kind of cool because they have like a, um, like a ch children's um, program where they go out on nature walks and they, I just can, I can see you leading one of those. I think yeah, that'd be well, that's been on my yeah. mind, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you should check. I might, I might actually inquire about that with them when I go up there. <laughs> well, they probably know who I am. They might have different, you know, depends who you talk to. There. Oh, okay. A lot of people are gonna know who I am. Right? Oh, sure, sure. I just think it'd be so great to get start a um, like an an activity group or yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> Can I see your horn real quick, Bruce? Ooh, yeah. So the Poplar River, the 
place that Bruce spends the most time at is the river that runs into Lake Superior right through the Luton Resort area. And um, one of the things that Bruce was really instrumental in drawing attention to was the impact of development on the Poplar River. And so when he talks about going all the way back to the golf course as a kid and observing impacts, the, that, is, that keen portion of his awareness is still in effect in his relationship with the environment here. And, um, but one of the challenges that has come with uh, being Bruce's unique personality is that he's often misunderstood by other people. Uh, mm. He has all the knowledge and all the awareness, um, but also it's hard for mainstream folks to understand mm -hmm. what he's saying. So, you know, there's, um, there's still a long ways to go, I think, for mainstream society to come towards folks on the spectrum and 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 reap the benefits of Definitely. what they have to offer. And, and no, yeah, totally understandable. I just think, you know, coming from my educator and kind of specialized mind, I just think it would be such a such a great idea. I mean, you know, and it's hard because down in the cities, you get so many different programs and clubs and camps and YMCA and oh my gosh, we're just there's so many opportunities, but up there, it's like, oh, we got to get these programs into some of those resorts and some of those places. Exactly. I want to try and get some more steelhead planted on the Poplar River, and mm -hmm. they have uh, some clipped fish out there. It's possible that they can do this, but whether I'm going to be able to talk them into doing yeah. it or who. Well, Ananda's going to... Uh get some plugs for that when she comes. I'm going to get some plugs. I have, I have a hospitality background, so I'm Great. really good with those managers. <laughs> <laughs> managers. I know how to finagle them. <laughs> yeah. No, really seriously. I'll, look, I'll ask them. <laughs> okay. Yep. I'll be listening for it. Um, I want to throw out Hillary and Michael. Is there anything we didn't cover that you were hoping to get out of this, this time with Bruce? I'm looking at my question set and I'm thinking while I'm doing that. I, I don't, I, I'm kind of lost in thought. I, I think mm. we are told all the time now to look at multiple perspectives and take in multiple perspectives. Bruce, I think you offer a very unique and, and, and interesting and good perspective about being a human being and about what it is we have to learn from each other. Um, uh, so uh, I don't have a personal question, but more of a thank you. A thank you very much. And Matthew, thank you for your sensitivity. Um, both of you, um, you know, uh, you're kind of the way we want, I want the world to be. So, mm -hmm. and I think Hillary moving forward, um, we do a lot of, um, we're starting to do, let's put it that way, uh, a lot of equity work. And I think we focus on race a lot and not as much as special education, autism, those kinds of things. I don't, are, English language learners. I don't think we're doing enough of that. We're just focusing kind of on the, the race part. And I think we need to do all of it. And so Bruce, you, and you really offer a great perspective. And Matthew, I think you're kind of not just an editor, but a producer. Ah. Just say you. Thanks, you know, Michelle. so you two are a good team together. Well, just wait. Uh... You know, we may tap you all for your own unique experiences and expertise in the future to weigh in on how the entire world can be a better place. Yeah, yeah. Thank you both so much. And audience, thank you too for your participation and your beautiful yes. faces and your questions. And um, <laughs> Bruce is out there and uh, so, you know, um, here's to outside and to unique perspectives and to bringing them all together. Hmm? Here, here. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much.